Welcome, I'm Maya Chowdhury and I'm your guide through this video series on digital participatory theatre. Throughout this series of videos we've explored a range of digital participation methods such as a video poem, a transmedia storytelling piece, a visual spoken word album, an online game and a remote performance using digital props. This fifth chapter will explore different digital distribution methods and in particular methods that allow different types of engagement with an audience. We've seen in the previous case study videos that a range of digital platforms have been used for distributing the work and interacting with the participants and audience. And that there are many digital participation strategies employed to allow a digital performance to have interactivity with an audience. For example, online games with interactive video calls or live streaming and interacting via the chat function on YouTube. But which of these methods give a level of agency to the participants or audience so that they feel that they are part of the process, that their actions will have true meaning in the piece? The digital participatory platforms, tools and techniques we've examined can also be used for distribution. And, as we explored earlier, it depends on who the group the theatre makers are working with and the intended audience. And also, very importantly, where your audience exists in the digital realm. There's no point using Periscope, a live streaming platform, to distribute your work if none of your audience are actually on Twitter. In the previous videos, we've explored how the group you're working with and the message of the piece affects the choice of digital tools. This also impacts the type of audience you want to distribute your work to. So how do you decide on the tool for digital participation and the platform for distributing your theatre piece? Synchronous digital distribution is where you and your audience are on the same digital platform at the same time. For example, a YouTube live stream. This is also possible using Instagram Live, Facebook Live or Periscope for Twitter. Asynchronous digital distribution is where your digital piece is, say, on your website, perhaps with a YouTube video embedded there, and the audience can access the piece at a date and time to suit them. Perhaps it's also only available for a week. Hybrid digital distribution is where you use a mixture of synchronous and asynchronous distribution. For example, your event could begin with a live stream on YouTube, then a video call on Jitsi, followed by a series of interactive elements via a social media platform such as Facebook. The choice, of course, depends on your participants and target audience. If you're, say, working with a group experiencing homelessness who have little access to smartphone or computers, a YouTube premiere would not be a suitable platform to both create and distribute the project. But, for instance, a text game created and distributed on phones you lend to your audience might be more suitable. Let's look at a range of digital distribution platforms and how and why they're suitable for digital participatory theatre projects. We will look at the level of participation required and if participation is available through text chat, video chat or audio chat. A popular method which has emerged during COVID-19 is a video conference call, sometimes with simultaneous live streaming to a range of platforms such as YouTube, Periscope and Facebook. This method allows interaction with a group of participants on the video call, as well as distributing the work to a wider audience. If you're using a platform such as Zoom or Skype, it requires a paid plan a good Wi-Fi connection and some technical support, so not suitable for all projects. YouTube streaming is a popular and easy to use platform. It's free, although the pro version has additional features. Videos that use the premiere feature when the launch is scheduled for a particular date and time draw a bigger initial audience than if you just put your video on YouTube and invite the audience to watch it at any time. You can also decide to leave your project up for a limited time to encourage the audience to prioritise watching it. This is a good strategy as the digital sphere is very saturated and your performance might get lost in it. 
Facebook Live is also a popular distribution method for video-based content, although combining it with a Facebook watch party encourages some interaction with an invited audience rather than passive watching. Live videos are limited to 60 minutes in length. It's important to know the demographics of your audience. Facebook might be appropriate for adults, Instagram for teenagers, and YouTube for a younger age group. Instagram TV and an Instagram Live is another possible distribution platform. It's also free, although there are adverts throughout. You can link your Instagram account with your Facebook account to gather statistics on who watches your digital performance. Or you could release a series of short videos on Instagram TV and use the chat feature to interact with your audience. You can also save a replay of your live video to further engage your audience. This platform also lim limits live performance to 60 minutes and you can only broadcast from your phone so it might not suit all digital performance as it depends on the quality of your phone to create a high quality video. Discord is a free gaming platform that allows players of a game to talk over voice, video and text. It's been used during the COVID-19 pandemic to create digital performances that allow a ver variety of interactions with participants. Its main disadvantage is that it is unfamiliar to non-gamers and takes more time to customise than the platforms I've just discussed. However, if you want a level of interactivity not possible with the other platforms, you can have an audience rehearsal so that some of your audience is more familiar before the digital performance begins. All of these distribution platforms can be used for digital performance and other platforms woven into your piece to add further interactivity with your participants and audience. For example, text messages or WhatsApp messages can be used in the run-up to your performance to introduce characters, ideas, and later in the piece to perhaps choose the next scene or the action a character takes, as in forum theatre. In fact, any social media platform such as Twitter, Instagram can be used in this way. It's important to be able to manage the multiple conversations that might arise from inviting participants in this way. And it might be better to choose one platform that your audiences are familiar with. Through this series of videos, we've discovered that not all of these digital platforms are available and usable by all members of society. In a case study video, New World, Debbie Bandara of Forest Tribe Dance Theatre has used digital props with haptics or sensor boards to allow learning disabled young people to participate in the theatre piece combined with a remote live stream performance to allow access by disabled young people who wouldn't be able to attend a live performance. These distinct digital tools offered participation possibilities for groups that would not be available in a non-digital participatory theatre project. To summarise, in this chapter, we've examined the types of participation and distribution methods and how they've been applied to different digital participation projects. Thank you for joining me on this journey through digital participatory theatre. Do delve into the accompanying case study videos for a more in-depth look at some specific projects. Hello, I am Debbie Bandara and I am the CEO and Artistic Director of Forest Tribe Theatre and today I will be sharing with you the digital participation and distribution methods for the current project I'm working on called New World. So let me give you a little bit of background information about Forest Tribe. It was established in 2017 now and has been project funded by the Arts Council. That has allowed us to deliver real immersive pieces of work to library settings and to schools and theatres. And the work has allowed us to connect and reach out to 
a group of audiences that rarely get the chance to experience arts and creativity, um, perhaps not even afford to go to the theatre. So it's quite exciting how we can inspire young minds to possibly pursue the world of arts and creativity. So a little bit about myself. So I am a theatre maker, a director, a choreographer, a writer, um, and I have worked extensively with the inclusive theatre practice. So I've choreographed and co-directed work for audiences who find themselves on the autistic spectrum, who have profound multiple learning needs and who are deafblind. And the work has been taken not just regionally in the UK, but has also been taken into parts of Europe, including Sweden. So I want to really give you a sense that the knowledge base and the expertise is coming from a place where we are understanding our audiences entirely, how they perceive the world and what the senses can be utilised to really engage them and create a truly immersive experience. And that's really, really important. So New World literally has been created during the pandemic phase. Um, I was understanding and listening to parents and carers at the special schools where I volunteer and really listened carefully to what was going on with their children and realised that the current project that I had originally planned for couldn't happen because we just couldn't go into the spaces. So with that in mind, I realised that it was really important to, to connect with these audiences and find a way. Um, and that's where New World was formed. A little bit about it, as we're currently making it right now, um, it's using haptic technology. So it's using interactives, which children can connect with and engage with. And it's going to be live streamed to a remote studio using a 5G technology bandwidth. So when we're talking about haptics in particular, we're talking about interactives, things that you can press and it can react. So for example, the story that I've written is based on a poem that I've written called uh, New World. And it's about being in a rainforest. And it's about the current, actually the current situation that's occurring in the rainforest, which is not particularly healthy and good at the moment. And we're trying to raise awareness in, in, in one shape or form about how tragic human greed and the way that the world currently works is detrimental to the sustainability of how our climate will survive. Um, and it's a response. It's a response to how we need to really reflect on what we're doing and take ownership and responsibility. So the poem is allowing the audience members, and let's just be clear, the audience members are non-verbal autistic children, to be part in their immersive experience and feel and hear and see and taste and move as if they're in a real lush Amazonian rainforest. So in order to make these elements come to life, we are going to be implementing haptics into the space. For example, we're currently making a felted pebble stool that can allow people to roll on top of, roll around as they wish. 
and embedded into the stool, which is nice and soft and cosy, it also has speakers and soundscapes that is going to admit sounds of the rainforest. So we're very keen in making sure that we're able to connect to our audience members in ways that are probably not the usual methods that you might find in mainstream theatre settings. So we also are utilising the 5G bandwidth. And why are we doing that? What's the reason for using 5G? I mean, lots of people have different views about 5G, but really 5G offers reduced latency. So that means that the time it takes to transfer data across is, is as quick as possible. So we're going to get as close to real-time interactivity as possible. For example, we're in our remote studio, we're going to have our tr actor who's a, a tribal person and he's going to communicate directly to the children in the space. And also we're going to be activating some of the interactives in real time and that's going to happen again through this 5G connectivity. So it's really interesting to see how we can utilise the current technology to make theatre as live and as connected as possible. It's not just about the visuals and the sounds. It's also about the way that it might smell or the way that it might feel or the way that it might taste. So we are really honing in to all of the senses and in particular the senses of movement which is something that I feel quite comfortable with, with my background in choreography and dance. And by looking at all the senses, you're able to really understand how to create a real engaging piece, an immersive piece for these audiences. I've also worked with the children and realised how tech savvy they are using digital technology. They know exactly how to use an iPad. They know exactly how to activate the smart board. They even know how to use the handheld sensory items within the school. So for them, technology isn't something new. It's in fact a real, real object to connect to them so we can use the objects the haptics the interactives as a way to connect to these particular individuals especially if one of them in particular just loves the sound and will just sway from side to side looking out into the distant window and if you play music he will smile and that is his reaction you know he feels comfortable just knowing that there is music playing in the background and he carries a particular iPad and he just presses a particular song on the iPad repeatedly. And that is his way of engaging with the world around him. So it's understanding how we can transfer his form of engagement into the show and use it as a bridge to bring him to appreciate the work that we're doing and taking him into a different in a different space, a space that is shared, hopefully, that he feels connected. New World has, as you know, been created during the pandemic. So the construction, the design, um, the communication of the project has been conducted entirely online. Um, I'm working with wonderful technologists, artists, theatre maker, costume designer, composers, and we're all located in different parts of the country, but we're able to communicate luckily through the internet. And that has been an amazing 
asset, but also has been a disadvantage in many ways because we can't necessarily be together in the same space and kind of buzzing and riffing off each other with ideas. Um, I've had to really um, hold space for all of them in the meetings to ensure that the idea is clear, is driven and has got set points and targets that we meet to. And we really look forward to sharing with you the development of making this particular type of theatre, this hybrid form of theatre. It's not necessarily a temporary fix. It's possibly something that will allow us to really reach out to new audiences using the technology that exists.